Good morning, my dear friends, my fellow believer. It is a great opportunity and a great privilege to be in the studios of the evangelist ministry and preach the gospel to all of you, my friends. From the studios of the evangelist ministry, we spread the good news about Jesus Christ and his saving grace. Our mission, the mission of this ministry is to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. The topic of this morning is believers and his hope and heritage. Seeing as I mean, is here this morning, my dear friends, we open the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 15 and 18. The Bible said this way, Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, might give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you might know what is the hope of His calling and what the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the same. My dear friends, believers like you and I, we have a living hope and inheritance in the throne of God, right up there in the kingdom of heaven. My dear friends, the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 1 to the 23, when you have a chance and opportunity, you read the whole chapter. Describe what the Christian should know in the Christian life. Describe what the Christian should know. We find in Ephesians two prayers of Paul. These two prayers constitute what the believers must know and experience, both a spiritual knowledge and experience. They are part of what every believer needs to be well equipped and, and mature spiritually. We must emphasize that every believer must know the hope and the inheritance that God has called us the Christians. Look at what Paul said. The eyes of your understanding. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. That you might know what is the hope of his calling. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Verse 18. My dear friends, I believe the Christian hope is not a vague feeling. It's not a, a, a light feeling. It's not a one, two, three feeling, my friends. Did I make myself understand? The Christian hope is not a vague feeling. It's not a, a personal teaching of the of the evangelist this morning, that the future will be positive, but a total security of victory through God that comes to us through the Holy Spirit that work in us on a daily basis. That is why, as a Christian, we must always be positive, positive, and if children then hears. Hairs of God enjoying hairs with Christ. 
If so, be that we suffer with him, that we might be also glorified together. Read the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 17. It's a, it's a wonderful promise is there. Very clear, my friend. That's why as a Christian, we must always be positive. The Bible said, children, then hairs, hairs of God, and join hairs with Christ. If so, be that we suffer with him, that we might be also glorified together. It, it, it is no more clear than that, my friends. Read the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 17, in case you could not understand me. You see, Paul intercessory prayer. He intercedes for us, my friends. We find in Ephesians two prayers of Paul. These prayers constitute what the believer should know and experience. Here again, both knowledge and the spiritual experience are part of what every believer needs to be well equipped and mature spiritually. Every believer must know, God, that the God of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, might give unto you the spirits of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him, according to verse 17. A spirit of wisdom, he said, a spirit of wisdom, deep knowledge, deep knowledge in God, and have a prudent conduct in the life and in the ways of God, revelation. So, God will reveal in you action and effect or revealing, manifestation of a divine truth. This is what revelation means. He will reveal all the truth of my inheritance. But my dear friends, to know the hope to which the Lord has called us, we need to receive a spiritual enlightenment. That's what Paul talked about. But what are our hopes as a Christian, my dear friend? Have you ever think about, have you ever make a list, a list of what are our hopes as a Christian? My dear friends, I mentioned a few of them as follow the hope of the resurrection of the dead. This is one of the hopes. You can read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, and you will read it. The hope of Israel, the coming of the Messiah. In the book of Acts, chapter 28, verse 20. The hope of the restoration of all things. This is Romans 8.20. Since everything has been damaged by sin and has lost its original glory and function. The hope of justice. Are you making a, a list? The hope of justice. Galatians chapter 5 verse 5. If fair and justify the hope of a reward in heaven. Do, do you see what I'm talking about today? Colossians chapter 1 verse 5. Chris, oh Christ is in us the hope of glory. Christ in us is the hope of glory. Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. It refers to the glorification that Christ who lives in us will transform and glorify us. The hope of salvation. We say by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The hope of salvation, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 8. The hope is that Jesus Christ will come and fulfill His promise to us. Jesus Christ is our hope. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1. Jesus Christ is not only the author of the promises that we have to receive, but also the fulfillment of this. 
besides our hope is to see him. Very shortly, my friends. My dear friend, let's see an exhortation in these words that I just said. As a Christian, we must be well now in the hopes we have. Because when we ignore them, we become a weak Christians without any interest. A Christian without inspiration to serve God, my friends. When we don't know what is for us. Paul prayed that the Lord will shine in all so that we know our hopes. Shine in the eyes of your understanding. So that you know what is the hope. This is what the Bible said. God is going to do tremendous and wonderful things with us and with this fallen world. God has great promises, including the rapture of his church, my friends. How many promises, my friends, we have? How many inheritance, my friends? How many hopes we have? And so many more that we cannot understand. I know as a Christian we have questions and answers. Peter and the other disciple wonder what they will get for following Christ. Can you believe that? But they asking questions. Peter and the other disciple always wondering what they would get for following Christ. Then answering Peter and saying to him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What, what shall we have therefore? In Matthew chapter 19, verse 27. They asked each other, What are we going to get it? What are we going to get it by following Jesus Christ? They said, what will be the reward for me? Paul described some of the rewards in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who works all things after the counsel of his own will. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11. My dear friends, we will. We will receive an inheritance. We have inheritance in the kingdom of heaven. It is a promise, my friends. We will receive an inheritance. What are we going to receive in Christ? Simple. Everything that God, that God prepared for Christ and the fulfillment of the time. And the Bible said, and children. Then hairs, hairs of God enjoying her with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we might be also glorified together. This is the answer in Romans chapter 8, verse 17. Because many Christians ask questions, what's for me to follow this Jesus? What's for me to serve Jesus? What is it? What is it for me? This includes the salvation of sin, my friends. In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14, you can read that. And everyone that has forsaken houses or brothers or sisters to father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit it ever lasting life. That's the best promise I ever have in my personal life. And shall inherit everlasting life. According to Matthew chapter 19 verse 29. I was said also that we will inherit the kingdom of heaven. In Matthew chapter 25 verse 34. In truth we are going to inherit God himself. 
Is this just an illusion or wish in my personal life? Not at all. No, brothers. God has already given us guarantee of all of this. The Holy Spirit lives within us as a guarantee that these things will happen. Will happen, my friend. Saying, in whom you also trusted. After that, you heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Wow! Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purge possession, unto the praise of his glory. We're talking about Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. My dear friends, we can get to a conclusion. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise to assure us that we remain in God's family and that we will not lose our celestial, celestial inheritance. And so we, we march forward waiting for His coming. Meanwhile, the work of our life so that we do not perish and His good work become reality. Reality in every one of us. Inheritance and reward are two different things, my friends. Conclusion, my friends. And conclusion, inheritance. What is inheritance? Is what belongs to us as the children of God. How do you like that? Inheritance is what belongs to us as the children of, of God, my friends. It's what God promised to us, inheritance in heaven, my friends. This is not a dream of this preacher, of this evangelist, is a reality, my friend, because the Bible promised us. Inheriting is what belongs to us as a children of God. Reward is what God will give us as a price for work. Be faithful. Love is coming. Testify love one another. Offer with love and sacrifice and deny yourself and take the cross and follow him. My dear friends, it's wonderful. It's wonderful to know, my dear friend, it's so wonderful that believers has a hope and inheritance in heaven. But we have to know what we have there. Because many ask, what is it for me to follow Jesus? Eternal salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. God bless you and God bless. Amen.